Okay, so let's have a look at a double covalent bond. So my example is going to be the gas oxygen, which is O2, two oxygens bonded together. Now, remember, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in its outer shell, and it, so it would need a further two. Uh, but if we only have two oxygens, uh, neither of them are going to give up two, uh, two electrons to give to the other one, uh, and even if they did, they're not going to bond ionically. Uh, so we need a different, uh, different approach. So the plan is they are going to bond covalently. So I'm going to, whenever we have a covalent bond, we have electron orbits that overlap. I'm going to draw these overlapping. My two oxygens like this. Um, but you can see that if we just put one electron from this one and one electron here, and then filled the rest in, one, two, there, one two there. Um, we, have a, we have a missing one. We have one, two, three, four, five, but there were six here originally. Um, and if we leave it here, you can see we're not going to have enough um, electrons in either shell. If I was to leave the dot there and the cross there, um, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons in this outer shell, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in this outer shell. They're not full. So what I'm going to do is move these two electrons into this covalent bond as well, making what's called a double bond. Um, and this is perfectly allowed. We now have four electrons uh, orbiting both of these atoms, and this is what makes a covalent double bond.